Welcome everyone to South Park Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are so glad you have chosen to join us today as we worship the Lord together and have fellowship. The house of God is such a special place to be. You may have heard people refer to a church congregation as the body of Christ. This is because the Bible explains each of us in, as individual members of one whole body. We hope that you will receive a rich blessing from your worship experience today. Saints, and welcome to South Park's um, prayer meeting service. I want to thank you for being here uh, this evening, and I want to thank you so much for 
uh, the time that you have decided to spend in with the Lord and with God's people. We just pray for the Holy Spirit to, um, to bless you tonight as we continue to go through God's word. And we pray. Uh, we, we are expecting you to send those prayer requests to us so that we can uh, pray for them tonight. Uh, we just want to thank you so much for getting on. And uh, if you have not yet, please go ahead and get those prayer requests to us as soon as possible. And uh, you can get them to us in theater or while we have in service. We'll be able to look those up and uh, we'll be able to get your prayer requests. Let's go ahead and get to the word because we want to get to prayer because this is prayer meeting. But we want to have a word before we have prayer. And uh, our, our, our word for tonight is going to come from Psalms 131. And uh, if you were here, I would say, what did I say? And you would say Psalms 131. Psalms 131 is going to be our word tonight. Uh, it's going to be our text of emphasis. And if you will turn there to the word and with, however you can give reverence to the word, whether you can stand up in your bedroom, in your living room, your kitchen, or whether you have a mindset of reverence, uh, please let's reverence the word of God as we read it. Uh, let's go into Psalms 131. It is a psalm that has three verses. And so we're going to read this psalm. Lord, my heart is not haughty, nor my eyes lofty. Neither do I exercise myself in great matters or in things too high for me. Surely I have behaved and quieted myself as a child that is weaned of his mother. My soul is even as a weaned child. Let Israel hope in the Lord from henceforth and for forever. Um, if you like titles, I'll give this uh, sermon at the title, I'm Just a Human. I'm Just a Human. Lord, we thank you so much for your mercy and your grace. We ask for your Holy Spirit as we look at your word. I pray now, Lord, as I stand before your people to give your word, that you would forgive all of my sins and my shortcomings. Let them not be a hindrance to people hearing the word of God this afternoon, this evening. We pray for your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm just a human. A young preacher was on his way to the pulpit to preach his trial sermon. He had worked hard on this sermon. And he felt it was a good one. He knew he had a good voice. And he was confident of making an excellent impression. As he walked up the aisle and mounted the high pulpit steps, the pride in his face and his walk was evident to everybody in the church. An old deacon shook his head and said, I'm not so sure about this preacher. He said to himself, the young preacher made a miserable failure of himself in the pulpit that day. And when his terrible delivered sermon was done, he walked slowly and humbly down the pulpit steps, steps, head bowed and heart humble. Boy, said the old deacon, if you had the attitude coming down from the pulpit with that you had coming up to the pulpit, you would have been all right. Just like COVID-19 is a silent killer to respiratory systems, pride is a killer to spirituality. In our text of emphasis today, it is a short psalm. It, it is only nine lines and three verses. Uh, it is one of the easiest psalms in the whole book of Psalms to read, but it has the hardest lesson to learn of any of the psalms. The big surprise is when you come to Psalms 131, it is called a psalm of triumph, meaning that the psalm is a psalm of a conqueror. It is a psalm of triumph, but God's triumph looks different 
than that of the world's triumph. When we talk about triumph in the song, we're not talking about battles won, and we're not talking about gaining of material goods. Uh, we're not talking about vanquishing enemies and, and grabbing territory. Uh, uh, we're not talking about triumph in the sense of material gain. Uh, you see, Psalms 131 is a psalm of triumph because in this psalm, it becomes evident to the believer, it becomes evident to the reader, it becomes evident to the person who's, who's looking at this psalm that David has triumphed over the hardest enemy that any person ever has. David has triumphed over the pride that's in his heart. According to the title of this psalm, David wrote this psalm, and, and David was a very successful man. Uh, David was a man that could have boasted and, and been in pride about all the things that he accomplished. Uh, he, he, he was the king of Israel. Uh, he was a valiant warrior. He was a man that saved the country from Goliath and so on. If there was anybody who could boast about all of their exploits and who could boast about all the things that they did well and who could boast about all of the money and, and all of the, the wives and, and, and the castles and the buildings uh, if there was anybody who could boast about being the man, uh, if there was anybody who could boast about being the goat, uh, the greatest king of all time, if there was anybody uh, who could put a billboard up and speak about their greatness, uh, it was David, but in this psalm and, and in this pericope we find David is a man not of great pride, but he is a man of great humility. His humility is seen in the way that he writes this song. Many of you might think that because David talks about his humility, that David must be in pride about his humility. But I, I, want, you to, I want you to recognize and understand that there's two words in front of David's uh, 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 speech about his humility that you have to look at. He says, oh Lord. In other words, before David speaks about his humility and how he got his humility and what made him humble, he, he says, oh Lord. In other words, he gives homage, he gives praise, he gives adoration to the God that his, he talks about, the humility that he received it from. So David can teach us some things about humility. Here's how David got it. And if you want humility, if you need humility, and all of us need it, and all of us need to be captured by it, here are three things that King David did during the first part of his kingship that can help us to understand how we need to be humble. The first thing we need to do is do not be prideful in your heart. Do not be prideful in your heart. David begins his prayer. He says, my heart is not proud. The word translated proud in this verse means lofty and tall. It's the same word that was used to describe Saul when it said that Saul was a head above all the other men in Israel. In other words, it is a pride that one has, uh, what one attains by comparing themselves with other people. Uh, it's a pride that one has because there's something about them or there's something that they've accomplished that makes them look like they're better than somebody else. Let me explain. You see, it says Paul, it says Saul was a head above other men. Saul did not become a head above other men because he had accomplished something. He didn't become a head above other men because he was better than them. Simply, he was a head above them simply because the, the genetic structure and the genetic uh, 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 the things that happened to him when he was growing up let him be taller than the other men. In other words, he was, he, he was proud of the fact that God made him a bigger man than other people. He was taking, he was taking credit for something that only happened because God did it. So don't be proudful in your heart. See, pride is the main obstacle between us and God. Pride is what caused Satan to fall. And pride is what caused Adam and Eve to listen to Satan in the garden. You see, the reality of it is, is people can be prideful. Most times people are prideful in their heart, in their mind.
over something they didn't have anything to do with. And that's what this word pride particularly talks about. It's being prideful of something you didn't have nothing to do with. It's being prideful about something that, 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 that nothing that you did may come to pass. You see, uh, the next thing you need to do is, not only don't be prideful in your heart, also do not be in pride in your attitude toward other people. Don't be in pride toward your attitude of other people. You see, we see in the second part of this, this prayer, David says, my eyes are not holy. The word holy in the verse means to be raised up or lifted up. It is often used for just lifting up an object. For example, Moses uh, lifting up his staff in the book of Exodus. It's the same word that's used in the book of Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1 when it says that the Lord is seated on a throne and he's high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. Uh, there's a, sometimes it's good to lift up your eyes uh, for the Bible says, I will look to the hill from which cometh my help, and all of my help comes from the Lord. But holy eyes, as the book of Proverbs speaks about, are those eyes that look upon people with a disdainful and, 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 and a discriminating look. It, it is those eyes that look at people and say, I'm glad I'm not like you. Uh, look to those other people and say, I'm glad I got more than that person. It looks at other things and says, I'm glad I'm more intelligent than that person. It is a look of disdain because you feel like in some respects as a person, you are better than somebody else. And as I've shared before, none of us as human beings are better than anybody else. The human body is worth about $26. In other words, if you're the president of the United States, your body is worth $26. If you are born on the street, uh, your body is worth $26. Uh, what it's saying is, uh, the David is telling us we should not look at anybody else with holy eyes. Uh, eyes that make it look like we are better than other people because of what we got and what we look like and what we've accomplished. God says, don't look with somebody with holy eyes, but man looks at the outer appearance and, and Said, don't be prideful in your heart and don't be prideful in your attitude to other people. So don't be prideful in your mind. Don't be haughty, prideful in your eyes. And then the next thing you can do, you should do, is you don't feel like you have to know or understand everything. Just kind of continuing on about the message that I preached this past Sabbath on the church being essential. Many people have a problem with God because they don't understand everything about God. They want to create a God that they can understand. They want to create a God that all the decisions that God makes, they, they can understand. It, it, it is something that makes sense or is logical to their human understanding. And what David said is, is that I don't deal with stuff that's too wonderful for me. I don't deal with things that are too, uh, that are too intelligent for me to grasp. But, and meaning that I don't hold God accountable for having to tell me everything that he does and the reason why he does what he does. I'm going to let God do what God does and I'm going to take my responsibility as a human and I'm going to do what I need to do. Uh, he, he basically said, I've learned not to walk above my means. In other words, if I don't understand how God did something, it doesn't mean that I deny God my allegiance and I deny God my obedience. What it means is, is I'm dealing with someone who has greater intelligence and greater ability than I do. And if I could understand everything that God does and everything God is doing, then God would not be God. And the reason why why he is God is because he does things I don't understand and he has abilities that I don't have. So I, I don't have to understand it. 
everything God does. And if you have to understand everything God's doing in your life to follow him, you living in pride. God does not have to check with you before he does something. Now, I've had some, I've seen some people post some stuff on social media to try to mock the church and say that they haven't found any preachers that have been able to pray COVID-19 away. And I want to say clearly that the people who are saying those things, those are people who have little understanding of their Bibles. Because in fact, when God allows things to happen to society, God's people who are a part of society have to deal with said trial just like everybody else. And the reality is that when God sends something on a nation or God sends something on a world, it's not so that he can get his people out of it. It's so that God can show his will and his grace among his people while they deal with it. And so you might say, I don't understand God. And that's fine. You might say that, I don't know why God's doing what this situation, doing this or doing that. And that's okay. But that doesn't mean you don't give God your allegiance and your obedience because you don't understand him. So now, you want to not be prideful in your heart, not believe that because you have God-given talents and God-given abilities that you, are, that you should be in pride. Satan's pride was because God made him intelligent and God made him beautiful and God made him the perfect angel. But Satan rec didn't recognize, he failed to realize that God made him that way. He didn't make himself that way. And when we are in pride about things that God did for us, we are, we, we, we are disobeying his divine plan. So we should not be prideful in our mind, in our heart, in our mind. We should not be prideful in our eyes. We should not think the other that there's something about us that's better than other people and look down other look at other people, look down on them with haughty eyes. And we should also never, we should also never think that we should be able to think on the same level as God and understand on the same level as God. So how did David achieve this level of humility and both mind, eyes, and understanding. Well, he tells us, he says that he got this humility as a child is weaned from his mother. He got this humility as a child is weaned from his mother. You see, when a child goes through the weaning process, they're agitated and they're noisy and they're crying and they're in a fit because their goal of when they're around their mother is to eat. Their goal is to get food. Their goal is to get something from their mother. Then they're crying because they're hungry. They, they are crying because they want to get something. They want to receive a blessing. They want to receive some type of material merit from their mother. And, and, and a weak Christian and an immature Christian uh, is just like a child that hasn't been weaned from its mother. A weak Christian is somebody who gets upset and mad at God and mad at the world because God doesn't just dispense blessings when they think they want it or when they think they need it. Uh, that you're like a child that can't be weaned. But David said that he became like a child that was weaned from his mother. In other words, David said, I, I, I want to be around God not just because of what God does for me. I want to be in his presence because I enjoy being with him. He, he was saying that his relationship with God had went to another level, that he was, he was more concerned about being in the presence of God than just getting from God the material blessings that he gives. And he said, he said this has caused him to act like a child that had been weaned from its mother. You see, when a child goes through the weaning process, and that child has been weaned from his mother's milk. That child still wants to be around the mother, but it's not to get the mother's milk. It's to get the warmth. It's to get the...
camaraderie, is to get the relationship, is to be connected with the mother. The child has went to a different level in their relationship with their mother. They're not crying and whining about cutting milk. They just want to be in relationship with the mother. And when you cry, when you grow in your relationship with God, you get to the point that your prayers are not just about what you want from God and what you think you need from God and questioning God. When you get to that level in God, where you just want to be in the presence of God without asking for anything, because your prayer is not to get something from God. It's just to be in his presence. That's what. That's how. You gain humility. When you get to the place that your time with God is not about what you want from God. It's just about being in his presence. Like a child weaned from his mother's milk. So, I invite you tonight to ask the Lord to begin that process of helping you to become a humble Christian. That process starts when you will allow God to wean you from a simple relationship with him that only entails what you can get from him. That only entails what blessings you want to receive from him. I'm inviting you this afternoon, tonight rather, to engage God at the level of a friend that you want to be in their presence and not Santa Claus, you just want to be in his lap. I'm asking tonight for your, for your, for your level of spirituality to go up because there's some troubling times ahead. And these troubling times that are coming, we're going to have to face them just like the world. See, one of the things I didn't say earlier about people talking about preachers ain't praying away COVID-19. See, the reality of it is, in order for us to show forth as witnesses for Christ and witnesses for God, we're going to have to deal with the same things that the world deal with. And God's going to allow us to deal with the same hard times the world going to deal with. But we ought to have a relationship with God like a child weaned from his mother's milk. A relationship where no matter how tough it is, we, we just want to be in his presence. No matter how hard it is, we just want to be with Jesus. That no matter what we're going through, we just want to be connected with him. That's what I invite you to pray about tonight. Allowing your relationship with God to go to that next level. A level where God can speak to you in ways he can't speak to an immature child. That's what I'm inviting you to do tonight. As we pray, just say, Lord, help me to get to that next level in Christ. The level where it's not about blessing, but it's about being. Lord, we just want to thank you. David who had been successful beyond any, any of his colleagues in, in Palestine, in the so-called Middle East, the Levant. He had been more successful than any of those kings. He had solidified an empire. He would become iconically King David. Yet, he said, I am not humble. He said, I am not proud. My eyes are not haughty. Because he had been in your presence. And when we're in your presence, Lord, we have nothing to be boastful about. Nothing to be prideful about. Lord, I pray for the South Park community. East Birmingham. Now North Birmingham. And any other churches who are on the line tonight, Lord, it is time for us as a church to go to another level in our spirituality, a level where we don't have to see numerous blessings coming to our, numerous material blessings to come in our lives, 
to maintain a strong relationship with you. We're asking you to go to that next level. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.